Thank you, Adam. It's great having you, working with you all week in the studio. We're here live in Barcelona, the Cube's continuous coverage of Cloud City. It's unbelievable. Dara Grealish is here. He's the C Chief Technology Officer and co-founder of 56K Cloud. I love that name. We're going to talk about that. And Alexander Lehrman is the Director of New Business Development and Innovation at Sunrise UPC. Gents, great to see you. Welcome to the Cube. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having us. MWC, you guys made the bet to come here. Aren't you glad you did? Yeah, yeah, we had to go through a lot of the processes, but it was totally worth it, you know? Yeah, we're going to talk about edge cloud, right? And we're going to talk about developers and how this whole thing's going to build out. But how do you think about the cloud? You know, we were talking to DR earlier. The cloud, you know, people think about it's a place. Increasingly people say, no, no, that's actually experience. It's a development environment. The cloud is expanding to the edge. The data center is just another edge node. How, how do you guys look at the, the edge cloud? Well, we, we see the edge cloud as a huge opportunity to monetize on 5G. I mean, to bring the understanding and the features that 5G can deliver into the next generation of developer experience. Because once we address developer experience, we're going to be able to address that next generation of user experience. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's, let's dig into a little bit about what each of your respective companies does. Tell us about 56K, I love the name. Maybe a lot of people don't understand it, but you know. Yeah, yeah it's kind of a generation thing. So, we, um, I worked for a lot of large companies, all the super long email addresses. Uh, at the same time, you know, I grew up with the 56K modem, the dial-up modem as you know it. Right. And there, you know, the transition from dial-up to broadband was massive. I mean, in terms of user experience on the web. You know, the, 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 the impact on that technology that did meant that, you know, finally you could control the user experience. You had some predictability. And uh, we, you know, Thought it was a catchy name, uh, people relate to it. I used to work with test automation, so user experience was an important thing. And so uh, we kind of combine now, you know, cloud and the 56K kind of, you know, understanding slow, slow experience. And it's all about, you know, the, the addressing that, you know, user experience. It's a experience. game changer from a consumer experience at that time. Exactly. And that's obviously, you know, the metaphor you're using. Alexander, tell yeah. us more about Sunrise UPC, what the relationship is with 56K. Yeah. So Sunrise UPC obviously is a, a telecommunications provider, uh, number two largest private telecommunications provider in Switzerland. And uh, in, in terms of uh, partnership with 56K Cloud, we've, we've basically started the conversation of how we can bring our world together with uh, what uh, 56K Cloud is doing. We see a lot of things that we can do to kind of improve the offer uh, from, our, from our end to our customers and the wider community as well. Yeah, so this is a good example, right? Because we see, we always talk about the global tele telco industry, but there's a lot of localization, right? Yeah. There's a lot of public policy that has to be considered. So let's get into the cloud portion yeah. of your name. You think about things like Wavelength, which is essentially, it's really the outpost for 5G, you think about it, right? They're not satellite, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a platform for de development. How, how, tell us about Wavelength and 5G, the intersection there, why it's important. Yeah, yeah. So the edge cloud solution from Amazon, uh, as you've heard, of, you know, it's it's not just uh, solving existing use cases or, or problems. It's actually creating new opportunities by combining the technologies of 5G network slicing, network exposed functions, and uh, multiple access edge compute. You know, that's actually the platform. So it's about, and what we're trying to do is bring that developer experience, that tuning that is you know dominated in this large ecosystem in the public cloud stretch it into the network because we need to start to see developers to see the network as an asset. Once they realize that speed, bandwidth, and latency, you know, are, they're not fighting against this to deliver the best user experience. They can orchestrate this. They can be part of the challenge. And, and once we can get those developers to, to see the network as an asset, as a value proposition, then this leads us to kind of minimum components that will build that next generation, you know, next opportunities. So I got, you know, you had an interview recently with Jeff Barr from AWS, right. and he, he referred to, you know, AWS Wavelength as this is not just solving, you know, existing issues. He said this is an opportunity. You know, combining 5G, you know, 5G is not just 4G plus one, it's a whole stack of, of capabilities. And once operators, you know, realize that they restack on public cloud, their telco stack, then they can, that's modernizing 5G, going to smart, 5G standalone, um, and then once they're on public cloud, you know, dog fooding, you know, you start to take those technologies and you bring them to your subscriber base. But the developers that are in that subscriber base, once you address their need, they can have their creativity process in building those super apps, uh, like the drones, such as, you know, user experience, 
once they address that, then you're going to get that ultimate user experience. So offer yeah. So as a as a as a telco in, in the local region, you've got well, so you've got an advantage because you've got your presence at the edge, and you're leaning into next gen cloud native container sort of developers, we've always said developers are going to win the edge. Yeah. Um, and you don't typically, you know, most, many telcos anyway, you don't, we don't think of them as developer-centric. You, you guys are different, so I want to, can you talk about how you envision leveraging Wavelength and, and what the role of developers will be in, in your country? Yeah, I, th I think for us, for us it's, it's, it's just essentially very important to kind of look at new stuff in, in, in many ways. You know, my role at the company is to look at innovative things and to kind of think a little bit ahead of what's coming down the line and not necessarily being, you know, revenue if, uh, um, generating today, but maybe something that's like coming right. uh, sometime down the road. And I think that whole area has so much potential. It just plays into so many uh, fields that are relevant for a telco. And it opens a new channel in many ways because you know, we'll be able to not just sell connectivity, business connectivity, um, mobile, um, all those products straight to our customers, but we actually take a more sophisticated route by working with a developer community and then I kind of augment the offering um, that then will hit the customer. Right? So we've seen CDNs and over the top yeah. providers come in Use your network, thank you, yes. for do building out all that great infrastructure. It sounds like this is different. You're actually facilitating the development of new apps. No. What's different, what kind of apps are we talking about here that you can monetize? No. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, from small to large, literally everything. I think you know, what we've learned with the, uh, the rollout of 5G is that it actually touches all industries. And maybe there's some others that shine a bit more uh, than others, but. Uh, you know, fundamentally, it's such a big shift in, in terms of what we as a telco provide. Um, it's not just this smartphone-centric world any longer. Uh, it's, it's much more like building customized solution for particular customer segments and help them in their industry. So, uh, you know, one, one thing, you know, one, one industry I want to mention, particularly well, because we are from Switzerland, smart farming, agriculture, right? And uh, you can do a lot of good things there if you bring all these technologies together and solve problems that this vertical has had in the past, which was literally increase food production and be sustainable. Now you can do that. You know, in the old days, that wasn't possible. So you're talking drones, stream data, and 5G enables that. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a whole new world. Yeah. And that is a great monetization opportunity. Yeah. Who? Who owns the data in that example? Is that a discussion well, that's going on? Or? Well, the, who owns the data? The, the customer owns the data, right? If it's yeah, his or her data. Great answer. <laughs> yeah. How about when you think about 5G features? Network slicing, uh, uh, other capabilities. Uh, how do you see 56K taking advantage of those and working with the developer community to really exploit them? Yeah, so we've been more than four years already working in public cloud, uh, primarily on AWS, and, uh, and what we've done is you know, a lot of that uh, uh, cloud native migrations we've done, you know, we've seen those technologies, and what we're trying to do is remap that, and how we're doing this is we're going to be launching the 5G developer platform, which is going to be a you know, global ecosystem, an open source ecosystem, you can go and check it out, it's 5G.dev, literally, and, uh, in, and there what we want to do is expose these you know, new features of 5G, not just in telco language, so we're launching this kind of network slice as code, so that you have this infrastructure as code in the public cloud you know, domain that this is what resonates with developers. We want to stretch that, and like I mentioned earlier, make that network uh, slice as code. So such features in network slicing, dynamic network slicing, is you know, enhanced mobile broadband, geofenced way, speed, bandwidth in this way, ultra reliable low latency. I've seen it in my own eyes, you can single digit uh, milliseconds, it's ridiculous how, how accurate it can be. And then there is the um, massive IoT, so as we see in IoT, but actually bringing narrowband IoT really at scale and uh, not just that you need you know, technical boundaries or contractual boundaries to access that, the developer has the same experiences in public cloud, and so we want to monetize this through a, a global 5G. Single platform. digit latency, right? So I mean, you know what's going to happen? I mean, I think people, <laughs> I think that's why I love the name so much, right? And what happened is people, you know, even the consumer at first was like, oh my gosh, and then what happened is the developer community said, look at all the great data apps we can push in, and now, and, and now it's just orders of magnitude more that we can do. You know, yeah. We saw video, in the early days of video, it was like, you know, jittery, and, and so, so it's very exciting times. I think about the data center and how virtualization occurred there, um, and, and it was almost like force-fitting kind of an old model 
into a new model where the cloud was setting the definition of that new model. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now they're kind of catching up. Telcos are in a similar situation, mm -hmm. right? They've got very purpose-built infrastructure. You guys obviously are more forward-thinking in that regard, but is there a parallel there with the old sort of virtualization days and, and, and how you're you know, modernizing the network? You know, kind of what's the state of the network today and where do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've, we've always looked at the network as sort of our prime differentiator, and, and, and it, we have to be on top of, of, of uh, you know, of new things and make sure that it is top notch. You know, that's sort of a, a, an, you know, un, undisputable. Um, right, table stakes. Table stakes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And uh, so I, I guess from that point alone, you, you need to continue to look at how can you improve it, how can you make it more efficient, how can you make it more stable. I mean, frictionless is for us a key word in that context. And I think with, with those new technologies, um, you know, there's just more that we can do. And now we can actually, and this is the beauty of it that comes with 5G and all these new cloud technologies, is we can actually you know, make the network our offering again by, by delivering network-enabled services, which is you know, something that comes with 5G that wasn't there with 4G. Yeah, those value-added services are key. And, it, and, and it's, it's almost like, you know, I think about, again, I think about the virtualization days, but now we're bringing cloud-native mm -hmm containerization, Kubernetes, Docker, to this new world, and you're doing it on the cl a cloud cloud platform. So yeah. that's what's different about the data centers. Mm -hmm. The data centers were trying to do it on general purpose platforms that were kind of being refactored and forced into it, but the cloud has shown us the way, and it's different, isn't it? Isn't, yeah, exactly. I mean, but what it has shown to us is that you know, we, no, we no longer have to sell you know, the top, top down or anything. What we're doing is we have to sell developer to developer. You know, we have, there is multiple you know, uh, avenues, not just SIM cards, or subscribers or large enterprises wanting a thousand SIM cards. It's past that. You know? it's, it, now it's developers building those you know, augmented kind of user experiences on the app, on drones, like you mentioned, you know, like tractors and stuff, and Agritech. And it's, it, in the end, you know, the, these developers need to become aware that the network can be orchestrated by them and that we can describe this network as code in a familiar way, the way they develop those applications. Uh, we need to extend all that developer experience to those applications uh, and, and uh, not just be talking about, you know, I have slow speed here, I have fast speed. I mean, we want to enable some really serious, interesting use cases. Uh, Use the term network as code, infrastructure as code has been a game changer yeah. in, in the technology industry. But much of the infrastructure is not programmable. And so what, what you're envisioning is a world where, whether it's edge, whether it's you know, data center, or cloud, it's it's the same, right? It's the same yeah. experience. The developer experience is the same. The, the, the programmability spans, that's the layer that spans all those physical locations. That's the game changer. Exactly, yeah. That's why we have to break down those technical boundaries inside the telco industry, uh, make this familiar to developers and expose them. So that's why we're working with all the you know major uh, ISVs, the vendors, like you've seen here today in Cloud City. I mean, what we're doing is we're making those uh, network exposed functions, as, you know, if you call it that way, in a, in a way that the developers can relate to. And why that's really important is because uh, then they have that same experience on the mobile X, uh, you know, app world, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we've been here at Cloud City, what we realize is actually the vendors are also interested in that too. Yeah. Because they want to you know, talk across from each other and build and be more rapid and actually in the end, you know, build more competitive uh, um, be more competitive in terms of the network implementation, you know, uh, because right now, you know, f there isn't yet the, uh, let's say, the value proposition of why do I need a 5G phone? Why do I need a 5G? You know, uh, you know, for, you know 4G is just good enough once I have, you know, three out of four bars. Uh, but uh -huh. we need to get that 4G to 5G transition, and, and the developers is going to be is going to drive that. Well, when, they, when when customers see the applications, the, yeah. the, the, it's going to shine a light. We've got the mobile network operators, mm -hmm. we've got the, the, the whole 5G network slicing capability, we've got this edge cloud coming together. Real quick, you got to be excited, Alexander. Uh, that is an absolutely exciting point in, in, in our development, in our evolution as an industry. Um, you know, and, and it's a huge opportunity, because as again, as I said earlier, it is, it is game changing. It, it, it's, it's not just an evolution, but it's really a next a major step forward to, to do things differently. Guys, yeah. great having you. Yeah. We got to go. We're going to take it back to Adam Burns in the studio. Thanks for watching.